it's a necessity for me now. Like I have yeah. to put it on because if I don't, I don't know what blow I'm going to get. That's not going to mm. stop the enemy from attacking, but me being prepared and ready, I mean, I wasn't. Hi, everyone. We're so glad you're here. Come on in. This is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I, I like to say that with a flourish, my what? friends and I <laughs> <laughs> talk about the real stuff of life. Joyce teaches with her practical, no-nonsense way, and we live it out. And when we need a little extra help, we call it Miss Joyce, and we ask her. I'm Ginger Stocky with my friends Aaron Cluley and Jay Williams, and you you are now one of the girls, so consider yourself one of us, and let's talk it out. Well, I love what we're talking about today. It's such a great topic, yes. yeah. because this is maybe the most important thing I think I've ever done for myself spiritually. Yeah. Hmm. I think this is probably the one thing that, on a regular basis throughout many, many years, has impacted my life more than anything else I've done, I think. Wow. Yeah. So we're talking about, girl, get dressed. Come it's on. how do you prepare for your day? How do you get ready? And what do you put on? Mm -hmm. And it all comes down to the full armor of God. But the first question is, what? <laughs> 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 what do you mean the full armor of God? <laughs> yeah. So when we talk about preparing for the day, let, let's just talk about how our days go first thing in the morning. Yeah, you want to mm -hmm. go? Yeah, <laughs> they go really fast. <laughs> it's kind of like a circus show at the Cluley household in the morning. I bet it's exciting. It's, it's really fun. We could be reality television. Mike <laughs> is gone, so I'm by myself. Um, so it really is, I get it first and I throw everything on and my makeup and my hair as fast as possible. <laughs> I try and get my God time in then, which is why I'm glad we're talking about this. It's been really helpful. Yeah. Um, and then I throw on clothes for the kids and then I throw them in the car. So it's just a lot of... Throwing things on <laughs> and throwing people here. A lot of throwing. And then chucking them out the door. <laughs> yeah. Well, mine is actually a, a lot different than uh -huh. that right now. Um, I have actually been very intentional with, I, I probably get going no later than 6 a.m. And I try to, I do, and I just do my stretches, my yoga. Um, and then I, but I, I pray like while I do it, I turn mm -hmm. on my worship music and I really spend time with the Lord, yeah. you know, um, and really get in my mind. Because typically, like I try to go to bed and, and dump everything on God. Like, you know, hey, yeah. I'm casting it all on you so I can sleep well. I have no problem sleeping. Thank the Lord. Um, but a lot of times I, I can wake up with those things still on my mind. Sure. You know, and even though it like God is so gracious, he puts pushes pause for me while I sleep. So I don't think about it through my sleep. That's great. But when I wake up, it's somehow like. Ah, I have brand new mercies. I know that. But then in my mind, I can almost pick up where I left off. And so I have to intentionally slow myself down in the morning, really focus. I have a great window in my apartment now that mm. I can just see, you know, the sunrise. Yeah, you get the sunrise. I've seen your shots. Yeah, They're yeah, beautiful. yeah. So I get to see the sunrise and I pray and spend time with the Lord and drink my tea. And I've been writing out scripture like mm -hmm. because I, I need it to come alive to me. And read, just reading it alone for me <laughs> right now isn't. Yep. Isn't isn't enough for me right me now. So yeah. I've been literally like picking a book of the Bible and writing it out. So I really spend at least at least an hour, hour and a half. Like everybody doesn't have that luxury, but oh, because wow, now you're making us all I'm look so bad. bad. I maybe like got ten minutes in this morning. So yeah. I'm not. No, no, I'm really, I'm really, uh, I'm really happy for you. <laughs> I'm so happy like for you. Happy for me. I really am. I I think it is. Fabulous. <laughs> but here's the thing, I'm not And I, I am not there right now. <laughs> I am not but I am not like it's not like oh it's just kumbaya time. It's like a necessity for me. Yeah. For me oh, not to it. fall yeah. into the spiral of thinking about sure. what I'm thinking about yeah, naturally. Absolutely. And so and, and, and it goes with this subject matter of literally putting on the full armor and putting on like making time to do things when you know that you're in a position where you need I need Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like I need him and I need him to show up and I need him to heal me, yeah. you know, and so yeah. I need to do my work to make it happen. Yeah. So mm. that's yeah. my mornings. See, I'm not a morning person. I'm, I'll just be so, <laughs> so honest. And Joyce, of course, always talks about the importance of spending that time with God in the morning. Right. And I've known that all my life, but my time with God has always been some other time during the day. I'm, I like to be 
more of a night owl. So mm-hmm. I I have that great time with the Lord in the evening, or even you know if it's beautiful outside, mm-hmm. time that I can be outside mm-hmm. and and all those times. I've I guess I've learned to shift my time, but always make it a priority. Sure. Yeah, find the time, mm-hmm. make it happen. But for me, I found that the morning is not the best time. Yeah, because I'm not good <laughs> at it. You know, I'm like cranky and have out of it and this is like oh god thank you for being here but you know i love that that you make it your own you know i think i think that's i think you know like even my mom and my grandma like they were all like first thing in the morning you know like Mm -hmm. and so that kind of got in my my heart and my mind and if i would miss it which is the best way to do it if i if yeah and i would i would really feel bad about it sometimes but then i'm like hey if this is a relationship you know how you wired me. <laughs> like yeah. I'm gonna do what I do in the morning. I'm gonna to make, but maybe my mo- my more intimate time is yeah. when I'm coherent. Yes, you know? <laughs> yes. Right. Because are you then just doing it to check it off your list? Yeah, it's right. you're supposed is it to a do relationship it. Exactly. thing or a checked box thing. And that's it's not what like I'm tricking yeah. God. Yeah, I mean, I think we all need to just at least wake up with, in the morning and, with gratitude and give God yeah. thanks. That's Absolutely. Great. And that's what I've learned is that before I even pick my head off the pillow, you know, pick I'm. Pick my head off. Pick my head off. The, <laughs> pick my head up off the pillow. <laughs> before I even pick my nose, I tell the Lord. <laughs> No, before I even lift my head. How about that? Yeah, oh, hello. Thank better. you. Well, so much better. Uh-huh. No, I, I lay there and, and I say, good morning, Lord. Those, those are the mm-hmm. first words out of my mouth. You know, good morning, Father. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Take, take my day and make it yours. Get yeah. me out of your way. Yeah. And I pray for the full armor of God to clothe me and my husband and my kids and our parents, you know, like mm-hmm. our family. The, those are the two most important things I do in the morning is invite God in, give Him everything, and ask Him to dress me. Yeah. And so then I do a lot of the other stuff later when I'm awake and I know what I'm saying. But mm-hmm. I think that's great. Like, mm-hmm. I think that is, that's a, that's what a relationship is. Like, yeah. who wants to wake up to a family member or a spouse and not get a good morning, you know? Right, yes. If it's a relationship, um, I think... W- I think we need to give ourselves permission to ha- let it be that. Like, I don't want to have a full on conversation necessarily with anyone in the morning, like yeah. full on, you know, so <laughs> I, I might want to be like, hey, good morning. How's your day? Like with my daughter, I'm like, how you doing? Is it are you good? Yeah. Um, but then as we wake up and even at dinner time, we talk more or sure. before we go to bed, we talk. So I think and some people are great in the mornings. Most people are better in the mornings than I am. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I love having meetings with you first thing in the morning. <laughs> How They're are they? some of my favorites. How actually. are they? I'm a little slap happy usually. I just a little know weird. her so well, so <laughs> she's very professional. Uh-huh. She does them well, but I know what's <laughs> happening in her mind. <laughs> she still wishes she was in her bed. <laughs> Let's get this all done. Let's get it done. We about done. Uh-huh. We're, we're doing it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I love that we all are doing different things because, like you said, it is that individual relationship. Mm-hmm. But we're doing the key things. And that's why whatever it is that you're doing, um, make it work for you and God, but don't leave God out of it. And that's why we're talking about putting on the full armor of God. You know, while I'm talking to all of our friends who are here with us today, too, we want to hear so much more from you on this podcast. In fact, um, we've got a survey going out to all of our friends so that you can help us pick the topics that we talk about and give us some input. And so if you sign up for our friends' email list, then that survey will be going out very soon. And you also get the the free resource and the fun behind-the-scenes stuff. So I just want to encourage everyone to sign up yes. mm-hmm. for that friends list. So and if you do it, let me find the date, let me find the date. If you do it before uh, November 17th, because that's the deadline for this survey, um, you'll you'll get to just say, hey, I would really like to talk about this with mm-hmm. the girls, and I want to hear about this from Joyce. So sign up and do that. Yeah, We'd good. love to hear how you do your time with God, too. But mm-hmm. One thing that just keeps sticking yeah. in my mind as we're talking about this is I have always, not always struggled, but during different seasons of my life, struggled with the guilt of not doing it. Perfectly. Mm. So I just have this feeling some of our friends who are listening to are thinking, yeah, an hour a day, I can't even get five minutes in. And like, I get that. I, some weeks, it's ex, it's like a day by day thing. And I have my goals set to do this, but I've got two little kids and 
sometimes you just do the best you can, yeah, but it's 100%. never too late to start that habit. 100%. So if it's not part of your morning routine now or your nighttime or whatever works best, it's not too late. And right. uh, the stuff we're going to talk about today, I've just started doing because of the two of you. Yeah. That's what so. we talk about being in different phases of life. Yeah. You know, we're we're in very different places mm-hmm. with your daughter being older and what you're going through in your own life yeah. and we're empty nesters and um we just want to pray over our family mm-hmm. and our grandchildren. Yeah, children. <laughs> I have one. another one now. <laughs> so fun. Yeah, this was a fun this was a fun couple of weeks. Our our Baby grandson was born, and he is the scrumptious, cutest, cutest little guy. You got lots of snuggles. Oh, you're like anyway, a, you're like a pro now. You've got a granddaughter and a grandson. You're kind of like, yeah. Sure. I've got one of each, and um, they're very experimental. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm learning what I'm Exciting. doing. I know nothing of it. <laughs> but I do know that as I prepare for the day, and and I put on the full armor of God that He's given me, and I pray it over my whole family. I pray it over my kids and my grandkids. And so it's been so important to me because it covers every part of me. It covers mm-hmm. my thoughts mm-hmm. and my words and my my emotions. It covers my prayer life. It covers yeah. what God wants me to go out and do and prepares me. It's the weapons that I need to protect me. So you talk about um, getting ready mm-hmm. for a day. There's no better way. Yeah. So let's start with Joyce. Let her explain a little bit about what this whole full armor of God is. But before we do that, I want to encourage you to do this. I, I want you to get a Bible, get online, find it however you want. Go to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18. Stop this right now. Just pause it. We'll wait for you until you get back. Read that. And come back because that will help so much as we talk about this. So you do that. We'll all pause. Here we pause. Okay. So <laughs> I don't know what I don't know how to keep talking. Can we now. Like, uh, move? <laughs> Are we done pausing? I feel super awkward in my pause. Do that choice. first and let's talk about it. <laughs> and um, yeah, let's find out how Joyce tells us what the armor of God even is. Here she is. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. (laughs) For our struggle, now listen, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it is against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You get that, right? Your battle is not with flesh and blood. Your battle is not with flesh and blood. It's not your boss. It's not your husband. It's not your neighbor. It's not your parents. It's not your circumstances. Your battle is not with flesh and blood but with the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on, everybody say, put on. on. You see, a lot of times God gives us things that we never use. And so God has given us armor that if we wear it, it will protect us from the schemes and attacks of the enemy. We not only have armor, we also have weapons. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, and I like what the Amplified says, after you have done all the crisis demands. So you see, there are things that we can do We can pray, we can seek God. I don't know if you're in debt, maybe you can get an extra part-time job. There are things that we can do. God's just not gonna run in and fix all of our problems while we sit around and do nothing. After you've done all that the crisis demands, stand your ground. 
Stand firm then with the belt of truth. Everybody say truth, which is the word of God. Buckled around your waist, the Amplified says tightened around your waist. And I like that because when you're having trouble, you've got to hang on to the word of God tighter than ever before because that's when the devil's trying to steal it from you. How many of you know it's easy to tell somebody else to trust God when they're having trouble? Here's a little freebie. When you're in trouble, just do what you would tell somebody else to do if they had your problem. <laughs> so let's talk about how this works practically, because this is really practical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds when you're reading it mm -hmm. like like it's all theoretical, but it's it's not. No, no it's, it's not. so practical. So Jay, how do you how do you put on the armor of God? I literally start every morning, um, even with me and Taylor, and I say like, I go through each piece. So I'll just go through a couple. I'm like, Father, I ask that you just put on the helmet of salvation, which protects my thoughts, because that's where I really. The, you know, that battlefield of the mind, like I, I yeah. really just, that's where I start all the time, yeah. you know. Um, another one for me is, that's really strong for me, is the breastplate of righteousness, which protects my heart and mm -hmm. my emotions. Oh, that's good. And so right now, like those are the two that I really am like, I spend the most time, like God, I need you to cover me. Um, and also like the the shield of faith also to to block all the fiery darts of the enemy. Like yeah. I, honestly, all of them, but I mm -hmm. go through yeah. each one and I ask, like, I spend time on it now, like, more than I probably ever have before. And I want to clarify something. My time with God and, and the increase in it was one of those things like Joyce just talked about, where there are some things that you, having done all to stand, like, I have literally put myself in a position mm -hmm. where I have this. Like, I stopped working, at, you know, like, I stopped, yeah. you know, I stopped doing the full-time ministry for mm -hmm. a little bit because it was a, it was a lot for me. Sure. It was a lot in yeah. this season. Like I've done it for 20 years, but for right now, it was a lot for me to keep pouring out when I was bleeding. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't want to bleed on people. I needed mm -hmm. to heal and I needed to do what was best for me and also guard myself with the armor of God. So I want to clarify like this I was one of those people just like you Aaron even though I didn't have toddlers. Mm -hmm. I haven't had toddlers for at least 15 years. You know, I mean <laughs> like she's she's older now, but I barely had time to spend time with God and I was yeah. pouring out all the time. So anybody yeah, that's sure. watching that's um, in ministry and it's okay to take a pause if you need to spend that extra time with God. This is like me <clears throat> putting myself on a timeout, yeah. you know, with mm -hmm. doing the work and receiving, you yeah. know, in this season. So I, I take, I have time now to put, and I just think it's for a season. Sure, I don't think right. I'll have this much time and it's it's picking up slowly now. I've been going through this now as you all you all are my friends and you know and you you've been with me a lot of this journey. It's been like a year that I've been walking through this and so it's starting to pick up, you mm -hmm. know, and life's becoming not normal because uh, uh, no. no, but it's it's <laughs> it's becoming something yeah. that I'm, I'm used to. So yeah. Yeah. yeah so and it's becoming nice. something beautiful. Definitely something beautiful. I mean, something beautiful out of ashes definitely. Mhm. Mm yeah. But something beautiful, absolutely. I'm believing it. I have to. I have to believe it. And as long as I'm dressed in what, what God has given me, yeah. I'll always look my best. So I know about the armor of God. It's something I've been taught before and I could memorize, or I've memorized it so I could recite it to you, but I have never taken the time to put it on. Hmm. So exactly what we're talking about today. Yeah. I've never... It's something really cool in the Bible to talk about. It's a great story, mm -hmm. Yeah. but I've never thought how I could... Apply it to my Literally life. Literally do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Until a few weeks ago when we, so one of you brought it up. And so I thought, wow, that's a really great idea. And I love the practicalness of it. When I was looking into this, I thought, I want to, like, what does a warrior do before they put on their, all their stuff? And what does that, what does it look like to go into battle and have your armor on you? And so I started Googling. Google is very helpful. <laughs> but like Spartans came up and how the Spartans used to fight and what they would do to prepare for battle. And I found it really interesting. And it was, Joyce was just saying it like, you have, you have to take an action. It's not like you're on the defense and your armor's just like thrown upon your body and landing in the right spot. Yeah. They're preparing and it takes time to put your armor on and you yeah. have to step into it. I have to put on the shield of faith and put on my breastplate of righteousness. It doesn't just land upon me. And so I love that you're, That's you're taking good. active steps to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and it's not like light. 
It's not it's not like something you can just throw on. Right. Like the armor isn't like a duster. It's not like yeah. this. You know, it's not like something heavy. really light. It's yeah. some, and I think of like the cartoon, I don't know if I can but Mulan, like I really like it. And mm-hmm. like how she, how she went into battle, even though it was all men, she still had to wear the same armor, you know, to protect right. her. Mm-hmm. And so like you have to be intentional with putting that armor on you yeah. have to be okay with it okay this feels a little heavy but i it's got me it's going to mm-hmm. cover me it's going to protect me so yeah mm-hmm. you have to be intentional with with arming yourself and then she let her hair down and it flew and she was mulan and she was this beautiful princess she warrior was, and she was stronger exactly so you can be who you are you can be that strong woman and have the armor of god and be a fighter and a warrior yeah yeah. You tied that together so nicely right there. It's almost like we planned it. Yeah. I just want to flip my she hair around. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> that new haircut. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, honestly, she did. She ended up being able to be fully who she was. She didn't have yeah. to. That's what the armor of God really does. It, uh, it frees you to be exactly who you're supposed to be. Yeah. And it takes the pressure off of you feeling like you have to fight. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, yeah. the armor does mm-hmm. the war for you. It fights for you. And so... That's the beauty of it that I, I think is amazing is that the armor does the work. Yeah, yeah totally And agree. you get to just be you. Yeah. Well, let's jump back into what Joyce is saying about it and um, finish up and learn some more about those other pieces that God gives us, and then we'll come back. The belt of truth tightened around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Say righteousness. Righteousness. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Ooh, everybody say peace. peace. That's just, a, that's a be- pretty word, isn't it? In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, or some translations say, lift up the shield of faith. So we have faith, but we have to release our faith. Faith is not to lie dormant in your heart, it's to be released. And I like to say that we release our faith through praying, through saying, and through taking God-inspired action. You get that? Praying, saying, agreeing with God, with your mouth, and through God-inspired action. Being obedient to do whatever it is that God shows you to do. with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation, that means think like a Christian. (laughs) You get that? We think differently than other people think. We don't think according to the way things are, we think according to the way we know they can be. And so let me say what I said at the very beginning last night. The mind is the battlefield. And if you want to win the war against the devil, then you have to pay attention to what you're thinking. You have to think about what you're thinking and learn that you don't have to meditate on everything that falls in your head. If what is in your head doesn't agree with the Word of God, you can cast down that thought, our imagination, And you can choose your own thoughts and think things on purpose. Matter of fact, I will challenge you to do what I like to do sometimes. Take five or 10 minutes and sit down and just have a good old Holy Ghost think session. Just sit down and think, God loves me. God is on my side. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I have favor with God. I am one of his favorites. He's quite fond of me. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit with all, on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind, 
be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. And Paul said, and also pray for me. So there you have the full armor, head to toe, everything that we need. And we, we have a free resource for you too. And when we say free, d don't overlook that because there are no strings attached. Yeah, this free. is just because we want you to know how important this is. But we have a free resource. It's an audio download that you can get called Be Prepared and Armor Up. <laughs> so you can get prepared and, and get your armor on every day. Go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out and you, you can get that. But I also love what she said about um, thinking the way God wants us yes. to. God is very fond of me. Mm -hmm. How many so of nice. us need to say that? Yeah. You know, God is very fond of me. It's not just like the cursory, He loves me. Uh -huh. Love is so big, but we we brush it off. Yeah. Yeah. But He's fond of us. Like He mm -hmm. delights yeah. in us. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, beautiful. It's so beautiful because it's easy to think when you're having a tough time, especially um, to to almost put to doubt if God loves you. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And and so it's important to even change those words of fond of yeah. me, loves me, mm -hmm. I'm his favorite, you know, yeah. to making, for me, and y'all know I'm more like a practical person, I like to like make a list. I have to because sometimes when my mind starts to scatter and I start thinking about life and reality and future, it's like, you know, <laughs> and, um, and a lot of times I would always be like, what is a practical step to make me stop going crazy with my thoughts, mm -hmm. you know? And number one was putting on the helmet of salvation because mm -hmm. that helmet of salvation um, doesn't uh, stop me from thinking it. It just triggers me to think about what I need to think because yeah. those thoughts yeah. are going to come. It is not like a, a magical hat that you could put on mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, it's all gone. I never think that. No, you're going to- No bad thoughts ever yeah, come. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to think- Bad thoughts, but you have to discipline yourself mm -hmm. to remember thinking on these things. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever right. things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report. Think on these things. And for me, for a season, it was literally writing it down. Like I literally, I'll put post-it notes sometimes on my mirror just yeah. to force me to think on what I need to think about. Sure. I love that because this, this is a very spiritual thing that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So this helmet that we're talking about is not something we can see with our eyes, mm -hmm. but is just as real. Mm -hmm. right? And as you said, it doesn't make the problems go away, but it's like the Holy Spirit covering your thoughts mm -hmm. and you asking for Him to do that for you every day. And my helmet, I, you know, I've upgraded Ooh. over the years. And so I also, you know, have this eye shield so I can see more what God wants me to see oh, nice. and not miss the stuff. I want to hear the way that God wants me to hear and, and not hear things that I hear that are things like, you know, oh, they don't like me because of how I took what they said yeah. instead of maybe I hear hurt in their voice and I think about what they need, mm -hmm. you know? And then the other thing mine has is a great big old mouth guard because I want to speak <laughs> the word of God yeah. and not all of That's the good. junk that could pour out of my mouth on uh -huh. my own. And I see the importance of it in, in the way of looking at it like, I'm going to put sunscreen on, right? I can't uh -huh. see it when I put it on. It disappears Ooh, into my yeah. skin, but it's going to protect my skin from the sun. Yeah. And for me, you know, it's burning and breaking out in sun poisoning and all kinds of nasty little aging factors that I just don't want. So, <laughs> and, and the same like when I go hiking, I put on my hiking boots to protect my feet. Yep. Or after all that walking, you know, my feet are going to feel terrible, but they're just cozy and cloud-like in my hiking boots. So it's, I think about that with the full armor of God. Mm. It's, it's the amazing fact that my God thought to include shoes for, for me He's so kind. He's yep. so wonderful. Yep. He knows me so well. He knows how much I love great shoes. Mm -hmm. And he included them in the full armor and the, the readiness of, of to spread the gospel of peace. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, what could be better yeah. than shoes of peace? Yeah. I Another practical thing I did, I was Googling lots this day when I was studying. So I, I Googled the definition of all those different pieces yeah. that you put on. And that's a really great thing to do, just to like a word study. I love a good word study. Yeah. And I can't remember which one it was, and I'm trying to find it in here, but one of the things, 
one of these. Oh no, it was part of my Spartan study. But they, <laughs> they talked about how the armor and the shield were buffed to a brilliant shine and glinted in the sun. So just <laughs> did, you, did you see her face? I know, I know. <laughs> so cute. I, I wanted to get Aaron's so face just you. I'm lit like, up. <laughs> <laughs> but like I had this visual image of the fact that you know they're getting all their stuff ready and it's shiny. But like that's yeah. the whole point is for our armor to glint in the sun. Like you're right. That's what the point is. Is that we're reflecting God in all we do, and we cannot reflect Him if we aren't putting on that is so what good. He's given us. Let's say we don't put on the full armor of God. That's when I often feel very unprotected. Mm-hmm. You know, very vulnerable in a bad way, yeah. almost naked mm-hmm. before everything that's out there because I'm trying to do it on my own, yeah. right? Yeah. I didn't take the time to invite God in, to ask Him to get me ready for the day, mm-hmm. to protect me and prepare me, which means I'm so prideful that I don't need any of that. I'm going to do it all on my own. And that is where my toes get stepped on yeah. and yeah. my heart gets broken and I'm thinking all the wrong things. And if we don't want to feel that nakedness mm-hmm. that we all feel so often, mm-hmm. this is a great way to combat that, yeah. to counteract it. Yeah. That's Truth good. moment. I, I did not arm myself yesterday. I did not. I got busy. Hmm. Early in the morning, I got busy. And I, even though I had my plan, I started, I did some of my things, but I did not pause to actually put all of my armor on. And throughout the day, I, I, it just slipped my mind. But at, like you said, I felt so incomplete. Mm-hmm. And those fiery darts of the enemy, they were piercing in different ways. Mm-hmm. And ha- like, had I done that, now you can't live in regret, but had sure. I done that, I probably, I was hit with some more blows. Like mm-hmm. this year will not stop with blows, you know? And so I, this is why I say it's, it's, it's a necessity for me now. Like I have yeah. to put it on because if I don't, I don't know what blow I'm going to get right. day to day. Right. And so like, that's not going to mm-hmm. stop the enemy from attacking, but me being prepared and ready yeah. is a necessity for me. And I wasn't. And so I, I didn't I didn't pass every test yesterday. <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't because my emotions were on high because I was hit with some really heavy things. I'm like, oh, I thought I was just about to come over the hump. But, you know, you got to stay ready. Yeah. Like you have to stay ready. So I encourage you. Yeah. It's a necessity. Mm-hmm. So Aaron, I'm, I'm just real curious since this is something that you've known for a long time but have really just kind of started. Mm-hmm. So is there anything that you've seen in these days that have been a little different or anything that you've felt you've been more protected from or prepared for? Sure. Yes. That would be a yes. <laughs> Good. Absolutely. Do tell. Okay, yeah. next would follow, you like follow-up follow question. Yes. The follow-up question is what, what are those are things? <laughs> it's so neat to see what happens when like when you give your focus to God mm-hmm. and you're admitting the, this is how I'm going to survive this circumstance because I'm going to put on your shield of faith that you've given me and all these things. It's like Joyce said, I'm going to think not according to the way things are. I'm going to think to how they can be. Mm. So me putting on this armor is saying, I see and accept what is happening today, but also I will rise to the occasion because you've given me what I need and you've equipped me to go forward. So wow, yeah, I have seen God move. And it's been cool to not only dress myself in that, but then now I'm going into my kids' rooms at night while they're sleeping, and I'm dressing them in it. And I want to get to the point where our mornings aren't absolute chaos, where I can dress them <laughs> like we do it together. Mm-hmm. We'll get there one day. But yeah, it's. I think mostly it's been a m- mental transition that absolutely. And it's only been a couple weeks, so it doesn't take long. We don't mm-hmm. know the things that this armor is protecting us from. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many things that we will never know that God shielded us from. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so many things that we that we face that are going far better than they could have mm-hmm. because God is walking through it with us. Right. And this is such a gift that God gave mm-hmm. us that he's like, no, I've given you the authority to dress yourself. Yeah. You know, like yeah, it's not a legalistic thing. No, like if you all. do this, something, if you don't do this, right. something yeah. bad is going to happen. No, it's, it's like not it, that. No, you know, like I, I've watched you when, when uh, Peyton 
dresses herself or, you know, is proud of something. As a mama, you're like, look at her. The outfit could be awful. Terrible. But, but, she, <laughs> but you put your legs there all by yourself. Yeah, you did that. Yeah. Those, those frozen panties are backwards, yeah. but you did it. But they're you, on. They're on. Yep. <laughs> so, but I'm saying like, God has given us that, that ability to dress ourselves because he loves us so much. He's like, hey, daughter, hey, yeah. son, you can dress yourself. And this is the outfit I've picked out for you. It's the best outfit and it'll protect you. So I think it's cool. There's a confidence that comes yeah. with knowing that you've dressed yourself in something that'll protect you. Yeah. Well, Joyce has just one little added uh, oomph for us as, as we continue to talk about this topic and, and we'll start winding things down. But I think this will help give us that little extra push that we need to understand the huge difference that this can make in our lives. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you a story that's found in Joshua, and in particular, Joshua chapter five. The Israelites that came out of Egypt about six million or so, God didn't take them the easy route right to the promised land. And the reason the Bible says that he didn't is because they weren't ready for war. Well, what sense does that make? God wasn't taking them to war. No, he was taking them to the promised land. But I said this morning, to possess the land, which he says it's time to go in and possess the land, what that word means is you have to first dispossess the current occupants. And so, out of the millions of people that came out, and this just amazes me, only two, everybody say two. two. <laughs> only two of the original group that came out crossed the Jordan and went into the promised land, and that was Joshua and Caleb. Everybody else that originally came out died in the wilderness. Now, there were people born in the wilderness, and they went with Joshua and Caleb into the promised land. But it took these people 40 years to make an 11-day journey. <clears throat> Anybody relate? Well, I've been saved 20 years. I should be further along than this. But you're not because you just keep going around and around and around the same mountain. Quit asking God to get rid of your mountain and just decide you're going to go through the dumb thing. The only way out in God's economy is through. Come on. You can't have power over something running from it. You got to face it, go through it, and then you have the experience of having conquered it and it makes you stronger for the next thing you come up against. So, they had to cross the Jordan in order to go into the first town, which was going to be Jericho. And the Jordan didn't part till they put their foot in it. And I, I love that whole thought that many times you don't know, you don't know what sea God's going to part for you till you put your foot in it. And a lot of people, you know, they don't want to put their foot in it. They want to wait and make sure it's going to be good before they do. Hey, when I quit my job and told God I wanted to be in full-time ministry, we didn't even have enough money to pay our bills every month. But I really felt like I was following God. And you know what? He never failed us. And when I look back now, then those were some of the hardest years of my life. But when I look back now, they were some of the most precious years in my life. Because that's where I learned that God was faithful and how to trust him. You notice David was anointed to be king, but he had to conquer Goliath before he ever wore the crown. God anointed him 20 years before he wore the crown. You may definitely feel that you're anointed for something, but yet you have not yet been willing to face Goliath. So maybe our friends are waiting, you know, not sure what the next step is, 
or maybe they have a Goliath that they're facing mm-hmm. and they don't know how to get through that. Or, um, you know, maybe it's, it's that anxiousness of putting your foot in the water, not knowing if it's, if it's going to part for you or not. The wonderful thing about putting on the full armor of God is no matter what comes, we're not fighting it on our own. Mm-hmm. We're ready to face Goliath. We're ready to step into that water. We're asking God to prepare us from head to toe and protect us, mm-hmm. and we don't have that naked, unprepared feeling in the same way. Are, are there things that... I, I can look at both of you and know the answer to this, but this is my job, okay? Answer for us. This is my job to ask, us the to ask you these questions. <laughs> ask us the question. <laughs> Are there Goliaths in your life? Are there things that you're waiting None. on that that you know you need this armor to help you to attack because you can't do it on your own? Yes. <laughs> there she is again. Thank you so much. Follow-up question. <laughs> that would be a yes. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I'm surrounded by giants yeah. right now. And it's just like, I always say this, even when Joyce is in studio, it's like, I, I'm so in, blessed and encouraged by her story and her testimony because it's so, it seems very similar to what I'm dealing with, mm-hmm. you know, in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. And, and I'm like, it's encouraging to see the, the after, you know, yeah. um, and, and that's what, that's why it's important to share your testimony. Like people even ask me like, why are you sharing your testimony so much on the, on the podcast? Well, because honestly, I don't want this to take 40 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. I need it. I need it to take the time God has allowed. Like, I don't want an 11 day Mm. journey to be 40 years. No, if that means I have to talk through it, that means I have to cry through it. If that means I have to be transparent through it. If it feels like I have to carry this armor on me and like keep plowing through and like tapping my feet in water and, 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 and not knowing if stopping working at a church for a long time or for a while is going to, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. <laughs> you know, I'm just kind of like, I am trusting God with everything I have and I'm doing it definitely afraid. Um, but I know that I am covered. There's something that makes me get up in the morning and put that on. And that is the Holy Spirit in me. Like even when I've war with it and, and I have issues where I'm like, God, are you with me? I don't feel it. You know, but Holy Spirit keeps remind, like it, he, encur- he lets me have those moments, but he says, put it on. Put it on. And even the days yeah. that I don't put it on, I'm still like, I crawl through. I made a post today. I'm like, I'm crawling, you know, still moving forward. But I'm, I'm even though I'm crawling, but like, yeah, it's important to share that testimony. It's important to look those Goliaths right in the face and just keep going towards it. You know, like, mm-hmm. hey, I got to def- like God is with me mm-hmm. and I know that he has a plan for me. I don't know what it looks like. And I don't even all the way be- believe it all the time because- sure. You know, it's not really Christian-y to say that, but I don't all the time because I'm nervous. Because we're all human. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It's scary. It's and, yeah. and so, and, and it's hard to see the other side of the mountain when the mountain seems so big, it is. you know? And so that mustard seed of faith, I'm believing in that and I'm putting on my armor and I'm going to keep plowing through. So yeah. yes, like Aaron said, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I think too that, that I keep trying to remember through this, and she said it in one of her earlier clips from today was that we do what we can do. So I put on the armor and I'm doing the steps I need to take in in my situation. The things that I can control and affect, that's what I can do. The rest has got to be God's to do. Mm -hmm. And I can't do it. So a lot of it's going to have to be a heart thing that has to change in me or just all these different things. I can't control them. I've done the steps that I can take. So every morning I'm going to put on the armor of God. Every I'm going to do the things I can and the rest, he has to fight on our behalf. And that's all we can do. (laughs) He has to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why he gave us what he did. He knows how much we need his help, right? Mm -hmm, That's why Jesus said, I leave you, but I give you something greater. I give Mm -hmm. you the Holy Spirit to be with you. And that's why this Holy Spirit garb that we're putting on from head Mm -hmm. to toe is such a beautiful, wonderful thing that we cannot comprehend that we can't understand. But what I can understand without a doubt is that I'm a little teeny tiny thing that doesn't know what I'm doing on my own, right? (laughs) So I would not have made it this far. And I wouldn't have seen so many of the victories that I've seen Mm -hmm. if it weren't for these weapons that God has given me. And the, um, I think the, the passion to keep fighting through, because I know He's doing it for me, and yeah. it's it's not me waiting for the next failure. 
You know, it's yeah. me waiting to see God's next victory. Sure. I just really pray that you've been encouraged in what God wants to do in and through and for you with whatever your Goliath is, whatever your mountain is, that he is giving you everything that you need to be prepared. Put that sunscreen on, right? (laughs) So make sure that you do everything that you possibly can. And like Aaron said, God will do the rest. And again, that that resource is available for you because the more you study, the more you understand. Mm -hmm. That's hugely important. It's a free resource called Be Prepared and Armor Up, and you can get it at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And I also want to ask you again to join our friends list. We love having all of us together talking about this stuff, and we would love to hear more about what you would like us to talk about, what you would like to hear from Joyce on. And so you can do that by signing up at that same address, joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And please subscribe to the podcast and let your friends know too, because the more the merrier, it's just more fun. We can all be friends together. We can. (laughs) Make sure you hashtag it, talk it out girls too. Thank you. When you make posts, we want to see those posts. Yeah, we do. I love it. Girls, yeah, let us know what you're doing. <laughs> so much fun. So tomorrow morning, we are all going to get dressed. And yes. it's going to look really good. <laughs> and we're going to be strong like Mulan. And, and shake our head. <laughs> I'm totally going to do that in the our morning earrings. when I get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> shake our earrings. Yes. And you'll be prepared for the day. Thanks for joining us so much. Oh, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>